أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولقد آتينا داود وسليمان علما وقال الحمد لله الذي فضلنا على كثير من عباده المؤمنين وورث سليمان داود وقال يا أيها الناس علمنا منطق الطير وأوتينا من كل شيء إن هذا لهو الفضل المبين وحشر لسليمان جنوده من الجن والإنس والطير فهم يوزعون حتى إذا أتوا على واد النمل قالت نملة يا أيها النمل قالت نملة يا أيها النمل ادخلوا مساكنكم لا يحطمنكم سليمان وجنوده وهم لا يشعرون فتبسم ضاحكا من قولها فتبسم ضاحكا من قولها وقال رب أوزعني أن أشكر نعمتك التي أنعمت علي وعلى والدي وأن أعمل صالحا وأن أعمل صالحا ترضاه وأدخلني برحمتك في عبادك الصالحين إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين All praises belong to Allah سبحانه وتعالى The one who said أليس الله بِأَعْلَمَ بِالشَّاكِرِينَ The one who said is Allah not the all-knowing of the thankful. We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we seek His assistance and we seek His guidance and we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evils of our souls and the adverse consequences of our deeds. Whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees guidance upon, then none can misguide him. And whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees misguidance upon, then none can guide him. And peace and salutations be upon the final messenger, Muhammad, the son of Abdullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The one who said, أَفَلَا أَكُونُ عَبْدًا شَكُورًا Should I not be a thankful slave? I bear witness that there is no one worthy of worship besides one Allah and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final messenger. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, الحمد لله رب العالمين All praises belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and الحمد لله الذي خلق السماوات والأرض وجعل الظلمات والنور. All praises belong to Allah سبحانه وتعالى who created the heavens and the earth and made the darkness and the light. And my dear brothers and sisters. الحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا. 
all praises belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has sent down upon his servant the book and has not made therein any deviance and O servants of Allah and O children of Adam Alhamdulillah Fatir is Sama Wati Wal Aurija Ilil Mala Ikati Rusula Ja Ilil Mala Ikati Rusula and Uli Ajini Hatim Mathna Wathula Thawaruba Yazidu Fil Hulkima Yesha. إن الله على كل شيء قدير. All praises belong to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, the Creator of the heavens and the earth, the One who made the angels messengers having wings, two or three or four. He Subhanahu wa Taala increases in creation what He wills. Indeed, Allah is over all things competent. And all praises belong to Allah, my dear brothers and sisters, for our hearts, which are made up of four amazing chambers and beat on average 72 beats a minute and approximately 2.5 billion times in a life of 66 years and alhamdulillah and all praises belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this heart about which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said إِذَا صَلُحْ صَلُحَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّهُ that if this heart becomes correct the entire body will be correct and if إِذَا فَسَدْ فَسَدَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّهُ and if this heart becomes corrupt then the entire body will become corrupt. La ilaha illallah. Indeed, there is no one worthy of worship besides one Allah. And all praises belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our eyes. Eyes that blink about 12 times a minute. With each blink lasting a tenth of a second. And eyes that can see different shapes and differentiate between different sizes and different colors and eyes when used with the correct heart become a means of us witnessing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all praises belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our faculty of hearing and our ears that allow us to hear different sounds and differentiate between different languages and dialects and this function in our body that is also responsible for our balance and all praises belong to Allah for these ears that when used with a correct heart allow us to listen about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indeed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala belongs all praises the most beautiful of praises whether we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or we refrain alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen all praises belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala irrespective of our application thus it's imperative O servants of Allah and O children of Adam that we say Allahumma laka alhamd kama yanbaghi li jalali wajhik wa azimi sultanik laka alhamd حتى ترضى ولك الحمد إذا رضيت ولك الحمد بعد الرضا اللهم لك الحمد حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى O servants of Allah and O children of Adam it is with this introduction that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has inspired me towards sharing with you all that I introduce our topic of today and that is the statement, Afala akunu abdan shakura. Should I not be a thankful slave? This talk in this conference, which is a blessed conference, insha'Allah, with blessed people, insha'Allah, a talk in a conference titled 
the sunnah, the better. A conference dedicated towards celebrating the life of Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. A conference dedicated towards reviving the methodology, the prophetic methodology, the methodology of the best person who walked the face of this earth, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gather us with him in Jannah. Ameen. This talk, O servants of Allah, or the topic and title of this talk is based on a hadith, the hadith of his blessed wife, our mother Aisha radiallahu anha, a hadith which is in Sahih Muslim. When she says that she witnessed the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam standing long hours of the night in prayer, observing this salah, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to such an extent that his beloved feet would become swollen. And as a result, his skin would crack. Sallallahu alayhi wasallam. She witnessed her husband, our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, doing this. And when she saw what happened to him, she said to him, O oh Prophet of Allah, O oh Prophet of Allah, you are doing this when you are the one whose past and future sins are forgiven. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. You are doing this. You are worshipping Allah to this extent when your past and future sins have been forgiven. As if to say, even if you worshipped Allah a little less than this, it would be okay. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam turned to his beloved wife Aisha radiallahu anha and said to her, أَفَلَا أَكُونُ عَبْدًا شَكُورًا أَفَلَا أَكُونُ عَبْدًا شَكُورًا Should I not be a thankful slave? This is who he was, O servants of Allah and O children of Adam. A man of excellence, a man of ihsan in everything he did, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And even after he was declared to be from amongst those free from blame, he worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even better. And he never allowed himself sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to become complacent. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from amongst the excellent. Ameen. My dear brothers and sisters, O servants of Allah, and O children of Adam, if we haven't realized yet, then understand that being grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is part of our faith. It's part of our Islam. It's part of our Iman. And it's from exercising good manners with Allah, Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal, Al Wahid al Qahar, Al Ahad, Al Fard al Samad, Al Ladi lam Yalid wa lam Yulad, wa lam Yakullahu Kufuan Ahad, Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. It is from exercising good manners with Him, Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, and recognizing the blessings in general of a person who is benevolent to us, who is kind to us. But more specifically, when we talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we speak about being grateful to Allah, then this entails being grateful with our tongue, and being grateful with our bodies, and being grateful with our hearts. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. This is the most complete way of being grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With our tongues, when we say Alhamdulillah, and we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the magnanimous praises taught to us by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And with our bodies when our worship increases and the quality of our worship improves. This is from thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is from recognizing the bounties that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has showered upon us. That we are in constant touch with this reality that Allah is benevolent and Allah is most bountiful upon us and He showers upon us gift after gift after gift with the waking of every day and the sleeping of every night. Thus the servant becomes overwhelmed and he becomes more closer to Allah and he becomes more attached to Allah because he loves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more and as a result he worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala better and he increases in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is given through action 
as well. And we know this from when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the family of Dawood alayhi salam to thank Allah through action for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I'malu ala Dawood shukra. Allah commanded the family of Dawood alayhi salam to be thankful in practice, to be thankful in action. So that is thanking Allah with our bodies. And then we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well with our hearts. And this is through increasing the actions of the heart and improving the actions of the heart from our iman becoming stronger to our tawakkul becoming stronger and our love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becoming greater as well as our fear over the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increasing as well. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by reforming our hearts as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from the thankful. Ameen. Ameen. My dear brothers and sisters, praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and recognizing His bounties and speaking about these bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to those who wish us well. I'm not saying we should speak about Allah's gifts upon us to everybody. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith which is acceptable, إِسْتَعِينُوا عَلَىٰ قَضَاءِ حَوَائِجِكُمْ بِالْكِتْمَانِ That assist yourselves in your affairs by keeping them a secret. By not exposing them. Right? Today, mashaAllah, everything goes on Facebook. As soon as it happens, post on Facebook. Which restaurant I'm in, what food I'm eating, which waiter served me, the price of the meal as well. Everything is on Facebook, right? Where everyone who wishes well for us and does not wish well for us sees. The teaching of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is to acknowledge Allah's gifts upon us, but to those who wish well for us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ Rabbik فَحَدِّثْ that as for the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you, then speak about them. This is from thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and sisters, thanking Allah is an act of worship. It is an act of worship. Recognizing these bounties from Allah upon us is an act of worship. When we thank Allah with our tongues and with our bodies and with our hearts, we are actually building our jannah. We are actually planting trees for our Jannah or in our Jannah. We are actually digging streams in our Jannah. We are actually building palaces in our Jannah, Allahu Akbar. How merciful is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us. That when we thank Allah, it benefits us. Subhana Rabbi al-A'la. We thank Allah, it benefits us. And that's why our scholars, rahmatullahi alayhim, say that you and I, we will always be in debt to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Always. I'm not talking about, you know, because we cannot put a price to eyesight. And we cannot put a price to hearing. And we cannot put a price to a heart that beats without us thinking. I'm taking it, or I'm speaking about it, brothers and sisters, from a much more simpler level. We will always be in debt to Allah. Always. Always. Because when we worshipped Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewarded us. So we were in debt. And if you said, well, let me thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for rewarding me, for inspiring me to worship Him. And you said, alhamdulillah to Allah and thanked Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewarded you again. So you're still in debt. And if you said, let me say alhamdulillah for being inspired to say alhamdulillah. For being inspired to thank Allah because I worshipped Allah. So you said, Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewarded you again. So you were still in debt. Subhanallah. And that is why the statement of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he taught us that none of us will enter Jannah because of our deeds. Rather we will enter Jannah because of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It makes absolute sense. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, O servants of Allah, and O children of Adam, is perfect from ever, and is perfect forever. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not need you and I to praise him for him to be Al-Hamid. No, O servants of Allah. He was Al-Hamid before we praised him. Allah did not need to create to be known as the creator. He was Al-Khaliq before he subhanahu wa ta'ala created. He is perfect from ever and will be perfect forever. When we thank him, O servants of Allah, this does not increase the majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we refrain from thanking him and live a life in sin, this does not decrease from the majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ghaniyun hamid. Allah is independent. The owner of all bounty and the owner of all praise. Allah doesn't need us, O servants of Allah. When we thank Allah, it is for our own benefit. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhannas antumul fuqara'u ila Allah. Wallahu huwa al-ghaniyul hamid. Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O oh mankind, you are poor and dependent in comparison to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is the independent. Allah is the independent. Allah says, If Allah willed, He will wipe you off the face of this earth. And replace you with another creation. Subhanallah. And then Allah most deservingly says, And that is not even difficult for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. When we thank Allah, it's for our own benefit. We build our Jannah as a result. And thus the question begs to be asked, O servants of Allah and O children of Adam, what is our condition with thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What is our placement with regards to this great sunnah, especially in this conference dedicated towards the revival of the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Right? We need to ask ourselves these real questions because inshallah we have come here for real change. You being here in this venue is the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make this a bountiful worship where you go home with magnanimous benefits from this get together, from this coming together. Environments such as this, O servants of Allah and O children of Adam, are gatherings that are surrounded by angels. These gatherings that have come together to learn from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. مَجْتَمَعَ قَوْمٌ فِي بَيْتٍ مِنْ بُيُوتِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى يَتْلُونَ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ وَيَتَدَارَسُونَهُ فِيمَا بَيْنَهُمْ إِلَّا نَزَلَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ السَّكِينَةِ وَغَشِيَتْهُمُ الرَّحْمَةِ وَحَفَّتْهُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ وَذَكَرَهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي مَنْ عِنْدَهِ This is what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us. A hadith in Sahih Muslim. He says, there's no group of people, yourself and myself, that have come together to learn from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and learn from the lessons of this book and the teachings of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam all together except that Allah blesses them with four gifts. The first gift, Allah causes contentment to befall the gathering. I'm sure you all know that because there's a lot of sleep in the eyes of the people. See this contentment that's falling? Now, I think your contentment is from the rice you had for lunch. He says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that contentment befalls this gathering. And this gathering, Allah causes it to be engulfed in Allah's mercy. And Allah causes angels to surround this gathering. And Allah is so proud of us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this gathering to the angels that are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahu Akbar. Imagine Allah mentioning you by name to his angels, to Jibreel alayhi salam, expressing how proud he is of you for taking out time to learn from the inheritance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the reality of this gathering. It's imperative, brothers and sisters, that you do not go home except that you have taken points of change with you. And you have a strong resolve to make a positive impact in your life and effect positive change in your home, 
in your school, in your environment, in your country. Because this is who we are, O servants of Allah and O children of Adam. We are from the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. An Ummah that never came to this world to beg in front of other nations and ask them what they can do for us. Rather, we are an Ummah that came to take from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and give to the people. This is who we are, O servants of Allah. This is, Islam has an unprecedented honor, an intrinsic honor. And you and I have to ask ourselves what is preventing us from ascertaining this honor. For indeed, Allah says, فَإِنَّ الْعِزَّةَ لِلَّهِ جَمِيعًا That indeed all of honor is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We want honor in our life. We're looking for honor in our life, O servants of Allah. All of honor is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah has placed honor in Islam, in being a Muslim, in following the footsteps of Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in being a thankful servant as he was sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What is our condition, O servants of Allah? Are we those people who have been plagued with the disease of saying, I put food on my table. And it was my skill that paved way for this result. And it was my effort. And it was my intelligence that got this deal sealed. It was my study and my hard work and my application in the exam that made me pass my exams. Is this who we are? For if this is the case, then hadari, hadari. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us. For the way of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was to say, all praises belong to Allah who inspired me to be diligent in my examinations and inspired me to study for my examinations and decreed upon me a pass. And it was the way of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to say, all praises belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who showered upon me beneficial sustenance. This was the way of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to attach everything to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not attach any success to himself. And this was the ultimate way of showing thanks and gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah protect us from heedlessness because my dear brothers and sisters, some of the speech that we hear from people amidst us is indeed a great act of heedlessness. And at the beginning of my talk, I praised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for certain faculties, for our heart, for our ability to see, and our ability to hear. And it wasn't done in random. I did it with purpose to highlight this point of heedlessness. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rebukes those who are heedless when He says in His book, in Surah Al-A'raf, وَلَقَدْ ذَرَأْنَا لِجَهَنَّمَ كَثِيرًا مِّنَ الْجِنِّ وَالْإِنسِ لَهُمْ قُلُوبٌ لَا يَفْقَهُونَ بِهَا وَلَهُمْ أَعْيُنٌ لَا يُبْصِرُونَ بِهَا وَلَهُمْ آذَانٌ لَا يَسْمَعُونَ بِهَا أُولَئِكَ كَالْأَنْعَامِ بَلْ هُمْ أَضَلْ أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْغَافِلُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, رَبُّ الْعِزَّةِ وَالْجَلَالِ Al-Wahid Al-Qahhar, that we have certainly created the hellfire for many of the jinn kind and many of mankind. Why, ya Allah? Why? Because they have hearts, but they do not understand. They have hearts which physically beat, but hearts which are spiritually dead. And they have eyes which physically see, but eyes which are spiritually blind. And they have ears which physically hear, but their ears are sadly spiritually deaf. Allah says about these people who don't thank Allah using their hearts, and don't thank Allah using their ears, and don't thank Allah using their eyes. Allah says about them that these people are like livestock. And Allah says nay. They worse than livestock. Worse. Why? Ibn Kathir rahimahullah mentions that livestock actually listen to the one looking after the herd. Allah says these people in heedlessness are worse than cattle. Why? Because they are heedless. They are heedless. 
They know about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they act as if they don't know. They know the coming of the hour is near, but they act as if they don't know about the hour. اِقْتَرَبَ لِلنَّاسِ حِسَابُهُمْ وَهُمْ فِي غَفْلَةٍ مُعْرِضُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the coming of the hour is close. The coming of the hour to mankind is close, but they are in a state of heedlessness and rejected because of this heedlessness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. Ameen. Ameen. So ultimate success, my dear brothers and sisters, is in praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in attributing and associating all your successes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for this is the way of the believer. All praises belong to Allah for the wonderful husband Allah has blessed me with. And inshallah our husbands are wonderful. And all praises belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the wonderful wife that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed me with. And inshallah all our wives are wonderful. And we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our children. And we never ever deny Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or recognizing that everything happens because of the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This, O oh servants of Allah and O oh children of Adam, this whole concept of tying everything back to Allah was the way of the best people that walked the face of this earth. I just told you what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Aisha radiallahu anha. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his book tells us about our second father. Who's our second father? Nuh alayhi salam. Nuh alayhi salam is our second father. Because when the flood hit, no one survived except those that were with Nuh alayhi salam in that which he built alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised Nuh alayhi salam in rank and says, Innahu kana abdan shakura. That indeed, Nuh alayhi salam, Nuh alayhi salam was a thankful slave. A thankful slave. And with regards to the father of the prophets, Ibrahim alayhi salam, Ibrahim alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Ibrahim كان أمة قانة لله حنيفا ولم يك من المشركين شاكرا لأنعمه اجتباه وهداه إلى صراط مستقيم. And then Allah says. وَآتَيْنَاهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً وَإِنَّهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ لَمِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Indeed, Ibrahim alayhi salam was a comprehensive leader, devoutly obedient to Allah, inclining towards the truth, and he was not of those who associated partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.